Hi, this is Al Williams of Sunset Hill Solutions. In this video, I'll be walking you through a demonstration of how to create dynamic default date prompts for report scheduling in Business Objects 4. So here's the scenario. We have a web intelligence report. This report is a production report that should be scheduled to run on the first day of every month. And when it runs on the first day of the month, we want it to be populated with year month prompt from the last month. So for example, if we run this report on January 1st, 2013, we want that prompt to be have the data 201212, so the year month of the last day of the previous month. We also want to have the ability for users to run this report on an ad hoc basis and select the year month that they want to run the report for. So in order to illustrate how this works, I've created a database on a SQL Server 2008 instance and I've called it Dynamic Prompts. It only has three tables. It has a, a product dimension table, a date dimension table, and a sales fact table. I've added a few rows uh, for December 2012 and a few rows for January 2013 to illustrate how the functionality works for this demo. Before I go any further, I should mention that I've um, created a backup file of this database and um, there will be a link provided underneath the video here on YouTube where you can download this database if you want to try this demo for yourself. Now, in order for this dynamic default date prompt to work, I have to use some of the date functions available in SQL Server. I'm sure that Oracle and DB2 and other database platforms have similar type of date functions. What, what this SQL does here is it uses uh, the date part function, the date add, and the get date function within SQL Server to return the month and year for the previous month. So to execute the SQL, you'll see right now the date is January 12, 2013, but it's returning 2012-12. So that's what I want. And we will be using this SQL as part of a filter that we build in Information Design Tool. So we've got information design tool opened and we're going to start building the universe that's going to be the, the basis for this demo. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new project. And I'm calling this project dynamic prompt demo. Finish. And I'm going to add a connection. I've already created a connection to the SQL Server database called dynamic prompts. So I want to right click on the connection down here and create relational connection shortcut and add it to the dynamic prompts demo project. Okay, now we have the connection there. So now we'll go ahead and add the data foundation, a new data foundation, and we're going to call this DF dynamic prompt demo. I use the DF prefix because it's a data foundation file. Click on next. This will be a single source data foundation and I'll be using the connection to the dynamic prompts database. Finish. So now we can add the three tables that are part of this database. So we have the date dimension, product dimension, and the sales fact table. Finish. I'll just rearrange them here. Put the sales table in the middle and create the relationships here. Detect the cardinality and I will add the relationship for the product ID and detect cardinality. Okay, so now we've got the three tables from our database in our data foundation. I'm going to save the data foundation. Now I will create a new business layer. That's a relational data foundation. And I'll call this BL Dynamic Prompt Demo. Click on Next. Select the data foundation in this project. OK. And we will have it automatically create the folders and objects. And I'll just do a little bit of housekeeping after it's done that. All right, so now we have our, our three classes, which are the three tables in our database. We don't need the primary key and keys in these tables. I'm just going to remove those. Product table, the same thing, we don't need the product ID. Let's get a 
change the product name description. There we go. And for the fact sales table, we don't need these IDs in the universe. So I will delete them. And now I want to turn the sales amount into a measure. So I'm going to turn it into measure with aggregate function and sum. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to do a little bit more house clipping here. I'm going to just going to rename some of these classes. So I'm just going to call this class date and this class product. So now we want to add a filter to this date class. So we go up near this plus sign, click the down arrow and select filter. I'm going to call this dynamic default date prompt. I'm going to click on the SQL assistant. And I'm just going to paste in the code that I'm going to explain what it does. Let me just validate that everything's good. All right, the expression is valid. So let me explain how this filter works. It says that if the year month field in the dim date table, if the prompt that we've defined here is filled in with the text YYYMM, then we're going to run that SQL that I displayed earlier that calculates for the previous month, the month, and the year. If that prompt value is different than YYYMM, then whatever is in that prompt is what's going to be used for the report when it's run. So this will allow for ad hoc reports to be run or the report to be run at any time with values that the user select. So as mentioned earlier, I'm going to be supplying a uh, backup of the database and also I'm going to be including this business objects for project in a zip file that you can download and I'll have a link at the bottom of or just underneath the video here on YouTube where you can download this information from. So at this point I want to save the project. I want to right click on the business layer and before I publish it, I just want to change the name of this universe to dynamic prompt demo with some spaces in there. Save it again. I'm going to publish this to a repository. Click on next and finish. All right, the universe was published, published successfully. So now I've opened up BI Launchpad. I'm going to go into Applications, Web Intelligence Application. So now I have Web Intelligence open in a new tab. I want to click on New, and I'm going to select the universe. And I'm going to select that universe that we just published, which was called Dynamic Prompt Demo. Select. So let's select the objects that we want for our report. We want to have the product name, the year month, and the sales amount. I'm going to run this first without using our dynamic default date prompt just to show the data that's in that those tables. I'm going to run the query. So just take a minute and there we go. We just expand these columns a little bit. Okay, there are only four rows in that sales fact table. We have two records for widget one and two records for widget two. And for each of those two products, we have one record for December 2012 and one for January 2013. So this is the raw data before we add that dynamic default date prompt. Okay, so let's edit this report now. I've clicked on the data access tab and we'll click on edit for the edit to the data provider. I'm going to add this filter we created and I'm going to run the query again. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select January 2013. So I expect, because I've selected a value and filled in this prompt, I expect to see results from January 2013. And that is the case, we only have two rows returned. Now if I refresh this query again, 
click the refresh icon here. I'm going to leave the default value for the prompt. And because I'm leaving this as YYYYMM, I expect to see results for December 2012. Let's see if that's the case. And indeed, we only have results for December 2012 because the prompt was not changed. Okay, I'm going to save this report to a report scheduling folder that I've created for scheduled reports. I'm going to call it Dynamic Prompt Sample. Click on Save. I'm just going to close the report here. I'm going to open it up in the Scheduled Reports folder or have a look at it here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to schedule the report, schedule an instance of this report. So right click on the report, select schedule. So in this case I'll leave the defaults for the instance title and everything else. And in the prompts, I'm gonna leave the default, which is YYYYMM. Alright, I don't want to change this. I'm gonna schedule the report to run now. see that the report is now we're going to be running right away and we see that the report has run successfully I'm gonna close the history tab and just have a look here to view the latest instance of the report so this is a report that we scheduled with the default prompt and we are getting results for December 2012 because we run this report in January 2013. So the way you put this scheduled report into production, so it runs every month, you right click on it, click on schedule, and in the recurrence area we would select monthly. We want it to run every one month and we say we want to have it run at 6 a.m on February 1st as the next run date and the end time will leave the default because it's 10 years in advance from now so this is good if I click on schedule. Alright so now we've set up a recurring instance of this report to run on the first of every month. It's always going to return data as of the previous month. So in my next video I'm going to expand a bit more on scheduling and show how you can use events uh, in order to run reports under certain circumstances. For example, if you have an ETL process that populates a database and it usually finishes around 4 or 5 in the morning, you can create an event that will only trigger the report to run after the ETL process has been completed. So that will be covered in the next video. So this is Al Williams from Sunset Hill Solutions. I hope you found this video interesting and informative and I um, hope it can help you out.